Florida State Seminoles taking on the Oklahoma Sooners and it's early I believe it's like early in the second quarter or mid to mid to like early mid second quarter and OU is about to put some real distance in the game and I believe they were about they're going down to score and they're going to make it like a three score game and I'm worried because you know I, I kind of chair for FSU I'm a Michigan FSU fan I, I like to see those programs do well seeing that the youth football programs I played for one had one year we had the why, one, one year we had the FSU spare, and then the other year we had the Michigan Wolverines helmet. So I always like to see FSU and Michigan do well, right? So, <laughs> you know, as, as OU is getting ready to put some, put some distance in the game, FSU probably, in my opinion, makes the play, that, the play of the game. I know it's not going to show up on the highlight reel and all that. I even looked it up to, to try to find it, and the, this play didn't even make the highlight reel, all right? It was a blitz. You know, OU's going down to score, and... FSU sends an all-out blitz, and the linebacker absolutely just bitch smacks, bitch smacks the OU running back. I mean, flat backs him, takes his shit, flat backs him, and they sack the quarterback for a huge loss. OU doesn't get anything out of the drive. Actually, they missed the field goal kick, and that's when FSU started to mount a comeback, and that completely changed the momentum of the game. All right? And what it got me thinking about in terms of what I want to talk to you guys today about, because again, I'm a former running backs coach. I grew up always wanting to play running back. I grew up playing linebacker, studying running backs, the whole nine, all right? And I've played with some incredible ones. And the question has to be asked is, especially in this season, are you training to be an every down back? Listen to me closely. Are you training to be an every down back? Not someone that they have to take, like this OU running back, right? They have to take out in passing situations because now the defensive coordinator can say, okay, number so-and-so is in the game. I'm going to send the house and the motherfuckers can't pick it up because the running back can't block it, right? And, and then the coach has to take you out. And then all of a sudden the D coordinator knows what you're going to do. It starts dictating. You become very predictable, predictable as a play caller. I'll give you an example, all right? High school, when I was in high school, my junior year, we had probably, in my opinion, the best, one of the best out there. His name was Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis went into that season as like this division one fullback type of a guy. You know, again, this is Coach Malloy. This is good counsel. Coach Malloy is old school. He likes I formation right, I formation left, ISO right, ISO left, that whole thing. With a fullback and a tailback, he's old school like that, right? That was one of the biggest complaints that I used to hear about him, especially when I got into coaching. But anyway, my junior year, we had a division one fullback, Anthony Davis, who ended up playing at UConn, who can do multiple things. So what we did, what he did, is he switched formations. He went to a formation called the trio, in which it was one running back, quarterback, and three wide receivers. And by the way, just so you know, those three wide receivers, Drew Glossner, Tyrell Jones, Colin Stevens, all three went to Division I schools and played Division I football. So you had the Division Three, you had, I mean, not Division Three, but you had three Division I wide receivers, a Division I fullback, all of them on the field at the same time, and it spread us out, and he had to adapt and mold to his personnel. There were times in which we were in trio the entire game, all because of the way Anthony Davis was able to pick up the blitz, and there was no, you couldn't predict it. You didn't, as a, as a defensive coordinator, you couldn't say, okay, five's in, number five's in the game, so now we know they're going to run, or number five's in the game, we know they're going to pass because of how well he could pick up the blitz. I mean, Anthony Davis was a linebacker himself. He played defensive end on the other side of the ball, so he knew, he, we knew he could pick up the blitz. In fact, let me tell you, I grew up, I'll close you out with this. If, if you really, if you're a running back, or if you're into football, you're really training to become an every down back, go look up, go look up a guy by the name of Clinton Portis. Clinton Portis, Grew up, I grew up personally a diehard Redskins fan, you know, ever since. It's been rough. It's been rough ever since RG3. I've had some tough, tough times being a Redskins fan, you know. It's, anyway, let me, let me not get started on those motherfuckers. But anyway, the one thing I did pick up when I watched the Redskins growing up was a guy named Clinton Portis. Clinton Portis would absolutely demolish motherfuckers, demolish motherfucking linebackers as they come out the blitz. And that is what made it so he lasted in the league for as long as he did. Very, very overlooked skill, especially when there's so many young cats out there who want to play running back. I heard it all the time when I coached. It's like, I'm trying to play running back, man. I'm trying to play running back, all that. Well, are you really prepping? Are you really training? Are you really doing the things to become, like I said, don't be a running back, become an every down back where they don't have to take out in passing situations and 
another point I have to make while I'm on the subject, get them hands right. Get them hands. Make sure you're able to catch balls out the backfield. You don't want to be that running back that they have to take out on passing situations because it completely limits what you can call it. What it limits what you can do as an offensive and it limits the kind of plays that you can call as an offensive coordinator. And all of a sudden you become very, very become very very useless right you get to be replaceable like beyonce said you're replaceable and shit you know what i mean and that that really is you know listen if you take that mindset that translates into your work life as well the more things you do the more ways in which you can serve the more things you can do then again you can shave off the, the competitors and you start to become the main person all right Dive deeper into all of this stuff on makeyamove.com. That's M-A-K-E-Y-A-M-O-V-E.com. M-A-K-E-Y-A-M-O-V-E.com. Make Your Move. That's where you can listen to my podcast. That's where you can, actually, if you're listening to this on the Move Swiftly podcast, just hit the follow button. That's where you can purchase all of the books, all of the bundles, the Plus LY merch, all that stuff. We're coming strong. Again, who are you going to be in 2023? As one Crookshank, your one and only Move Swiftly speaker checking out. You guys continue to move swiftly. We will talk First more drill is going to be a simple punch drill. We're going to line up a running back in a great athletic stance with two defensive players on either side of him. This means we're going to be able to work side to side, get multiple punches, and get some rotation and some body motion into our power. On the coach's command, the running back is going to punch once to the right, once to the left, and repeat going back and forth. All of his punch fundamentals should remain the same. Thumbs up, elbows in, nice strong punch. And as you watch this drill, you'll see that they're really focusing on the hands in the, in the pass protection and not the head or the shoulders. This allows us to strike, reset, and prepare for the secondary move of a blitzing second level player, either a linebacker or a safety.